Welcome to Airplane Manager. In today's video, we're going to go over the basic fundamentals of Airplane Manager. If you'd like to learn more details about certain modules, please watch our other videos or contact our staff for a Zoom uh, meeting. First, Airplane Manager is a progressive web app. So that does mean that the system requires internet and the system also will scale to any device like smartphones, tablets, iPads, and such. So as you notice here, I'm currently logged in on a computer. Um, you can use a phone with the system. You can also download our native app if you're a pilot or a passenger. Um, the native app is used for some offline features such as offline trip sheets and notifications, things like that, uh, flight time and distance calculator. Let's start with our staff page. In the staff page, this is going to be the area where you assign your employees and staff, pilots, executive assistants. This is where you're going to assign them access to get into the system. You're going to come to the staff page, hit the add new user, and you're going to step through adding someone to the system. Once you're finished with adding someone to the system, it will allow you to send a welcome email to that person and it will explain to them that you are welcoming them to the to the system and how to log in for the first time. Here you'll notice that we do have pictures as options for your staff members and we have user levels. So you can see here's an admin, here's an admin and a pilot. I will go over the list here of the different user types. These are the following user types that we have. And what this allows us to, to do is have built-in security. So to give you an idea, an admin is somebody at the highest level of the flight department. You do not want to give this out except for to a very limited amount of people because an admin can remove other administrators. Schedulers, for instance, can do basically everything in the, in the uh, system except for they cannot remove administrators for any reason and they can't take over the account. Um, a very common user level would be scheduler and a pilot, like that, that would be um, a corporate pilot or a chief pilot, for instance. Limited scheduler would be sometimes like a executive assistant or a um, scheduler at a certain department where you would like to limit them by aircraft and by department. So, for instance, schedulers can be limited by aircraft, but limited schedulers can be limited by both aircraft and department. Pilots would just be a line pilot. <clears throat> they're just supposed to fly the trips. So, <clears throat> for instance, they're not going to be able to delete a flight. They're going to be able to do flight logs, expenses, buy fuel, um, reports, time and duty, things, things of that such, write up discrepancies. Uh, flight attendants, maintenance, view only. That would be a very common user level given out to uh, possibly owners that don't want to um, add their own trips, executive assistants that are not adding trips. A view only user can also be allowed to submit trip requests if you turn on the function. Accountants can see re reports and expenses, accounting areas, invoices, and medical personnel are very similar to like an attendant. <clears throat> on the staff page, you will notice that we also have statuses. Green lights, yellow lights, red lights will also see the same statuses for the aircraft. So if you hover over the status, we will tell you what is wrong, what is going to expire, um, or what has expired. You also notice that uh, we track quite a bit of data and um, you can put in as little as you want basically or as much as you want. If you're going international, you definitely want to use a great deal of data because in order to pre-populate your EAPAs or your GENDEX or your customs documents or your CAN pass, um, we're going to need this data in order to do it. And of course, EAPAs and, and those functions that I just mentioned are all built into the system. <clears throat> you will notice here that you can, con you can uh, have private notes for your person inside of here. You can also track passports and licenses. Passport 1, Passport 2, Pilot's License, and also be aware that anything that we track can have an upload. So there's an upload right here for the document that goes along with the item that you're tracking. 
We do have training in here, so you can rename these training items to fit your own company. And then we have recurrent training as well, where you can select where the pilots went to recurrent training and how long it's good for, upload a copy of the certificate. Um, keep in mind, if the, if the pilots are allowed to log in, they can do this themselves as well. Permissions, um, you, you can restrict different people by different aircraft as well as PIC versus SIC. And we also have different settings in the system for text notifications, on and off departure notifications. So each user will have different settings that they can turn on or off per person. And a big area of our system that people enjoy is you can integrate our airplane manager calendar down to your Outlook or your Apple or your Android calendars on your phone or your computer. We also have eSignature built into the system for documents and third party app sync. So you'll notice here that you can um, integrate TripIt to your system. Um, 1 800 WX Brief, Garmin Flightplan.com, different things like that are here if it's per person. If it's not per person, it will be over in the settings area and that will be per company if it's an integration. Back over on the staff page, keep in mind that you can also turn off a staff member's ability to log into the system. So you can add a pilot into the system but disable their ability to log in. That might be useful for, say, a contract pilot that you use seldomly. Um, you want them to be able to be used in the system, but you don't want them to log into the system. Now we're going to go to our aircraft page. On the aircraft page, this will be your aircraft dashboard. So you'll notice that you have a menu at the top, and any of your maintenance integrations will show up at the top. Currently, our system integrates with Sierra Tracks, Traxall, and Gulfstream CMP. We also have our own do items within Airplane Manager. Do items will allow you to write up um, uh, do items, put them on the calendar. Also, it attaches any do items from the maintenance integrations as well as our do items onto the bottom of the pilot's trip sheet so that they know what is coming up due on the airplane in the future. We also have discrepancies and VORs checks. You'll notice here we have a map if you'd like to see your airplanes um, on a map, their location or where they're flying to. We do have live flight tracking built into the system. So you'll notice here you might see where your airplane last landed. If the airplane was en route, you would actually see a blinking jet icon here and you would see flight tracking information in this area. You can also see a six month map, map in history of your flight tracking. To edit a flight, uh, an aircraft, just click the edit button here and you'll notice that we have different customization information about your aircraft. So you get to customize the range of the airplane, the amount of seats, the home base airport, the calendar color, also flight log settings. You get to decide which columns are gonna be on your flight log, whether or not you would like block times or out off on and in times on your flight log, fuel burn, fuel start, fuel end, also mi miscellaneous columns. You can name them anything you want and turn them on so that they display onto your flight log per aircraft. Next, we've got uh, fixed operating costs, performance, staff permissions, um, flightplan.com filing, customs and EAPAs, notes, maintenance facilities, and uploads. So all these things will allow you to customize our system so that you can use more of our features within Airplane Manager. Um, customs and EAPAs are very popular, so definitely come here and fill out the required areas, um, such as who owns the airplane, what the address is, things like that. Back over on the aircraft page, once again, you'll notice we have a status, um, yellow lights, green lights, red lights, of course, and um, that will keep you advised throughout the system um, everywhere. Um, so you'll see these uh, repeated again and again. Now we're going to go down to your settings over here on the main menu. This is a very important uh, part of our system because this helps you set up your account. Uh, being that we have approximately 900 flight departments, you can imagine um, what it's like having say 3,600, 3,700 aircraft in our system we have a lot of different types of flight departments who like to make a few adjustments to the system. 
So here you will have general settings, uh, flight department settings, calendar settings, menu items, email settings, report settings, schedule settings, trip request, and different things such as that. Charter, uh, it, we do conduct charter in here. If you are a charter company, of course, you would have a charter menu over here. Um, currently, I'm doing this demo based upon a corporate flight department. So charter will be a separate video from this video. We, we also have accounting. So for instance, if you come to accounting, you would have the ability to customize your expense categories for your flight department right here. This allows you to customize everything so that the payment types, the categories, and all those types of things fit your flight department instead of you trying to fit into a big system with lots of options that makes things confusing. EAPIS settings, flight settings, um, you know, keep in mind we have a lot of different features here. So we have a flight release system, for instance, if you would like to have your own checklist and you would like to keep a flight as pending until you're ready to release it to your flight department. We have that ability. We have flight tags here where you can make your own flight tags, which I will show you in a little while. We have private airports and locations. If you have a, a seaplane or a helicopter, these will come in handy. You can make your own landing locations. Um, so that you're not limited to our database of 33,000, 34,000 airports. Trip sheets and itineraries. This is where you can customize some of the different data sets that are on the trip sheets and itineraries here. Of course, we have fuel settings, handling, flight planning, maintenance, and risk assessment and integrations. Um, we're going to take a look here now at integrations. And uh, this is a, a very big part of our system. You will notice that at the very top we have third-party vendors so you can open this up and these are third-party companies that work with us here at Airplane Manager and you can choose to work with any one of them anytime you want and what you do with them is your business. Um, this allows you to turn on the ability to send some of your basic data over to this entity if you would like to work with them in a limited capacity. Also on our integrations, we do have SMS integrations, flight risk integrations, and Baldwin is one of those companies. Um, we have Brief Me from Evo, Trip Support, Gulfstream CMP, EAPAS integrations, FlashPass EAPAS integrations, Flight Planning, Flight Bridge. Um, so Flight Bridge is one of the partners that helps you order hotels, rental cars, and catering. We have FlightPlan.com which is a very good integration. We have for flight dispatch, which is a big integration in the industry for flight planning. Fueler links, Polaris focus for SMS and flight risk, pre-flight mitigator for flight risk, QuickBooks for accounting and invoicing, Sierra tracks for maintenance and tracks all for maintenance. Now we're gonna go on to our calendar area. On our main calendar, you'll notice at the top, you have a add event button. So if you'd like to add a flight, you can do so right here. You can add an estimate, which is a pending flight, but also calculates basic operating costs if somebody would like a quick estimate of what the trip might cost. We have aircraft notes and calendar notes. For instance, an aircraft note might be that the airplane's being cleaned on Wednesday, or maybe that the tires are being changed. A calendar note might be that you're having a pilot meeting in the hangar, or maybe it's just your own private note that you would just like to add a note that you're going to get your medical, um, you know, uh, done on Friday, right? So it's just uh, whatever you'd like to add to your calendar. And on the main uh, calendar, you'll notice that we also have a search by trip number, of course, a date and time selection, and settings and filters. The settings are a very important part of the system. So if you click on the settings wheel here, you'll notice that you can customize your calendar. Keep in mind, you're only customizing your own calendar. You are not customizing everybody's calendar. <clears throat> Our system allows each user who has access to log in and adjust their own calendar settings to have their own different calendars. So we have different versions of calendars. So I highly recommend you go through and look at these different versions and see if you like one of the versions better than the other. We also have different settings here on how you'd like your calendar to work. Um, if you'd like the trips to span from start date to end date, we have spanning. Well, we also have leg by leg. We have days away, which are basically like RONs. 
Um, we also have, if you'd like to display your staff schedule over onto your main calendar, you can do so. Down at the bottom, we have all of these checkboxes. And this allows you to customize the colored bars that go on your calendar with data. So as you can see here, I've got my calendar set to span the trips from the start date to the end date. And I've got a tooltip pop-up that ho hovers, anytime I hover over a trip, it shows me some of the basic details of the trip and a quick jump menu to a certain part of the trip. Here you can see this is a do item aircraft note. So it's just basically whatever somebody typed in to tell us what they wanted, which was that the custom de decal needed to be ordered on this day. Um, we also have notes here that somebody has a medical appointment, right? Um, and we have different maintenance events with the wrench. So if it has a jet icon, it is a flight. If it has a wrench, then it would be a maintenance event. Also, the flight tracking will work on the main calendar. If you see this jet icon blinking, you can actually click on the jet icon and we will show the live flight tracking right there on the calendar. And you will notice down here in green, we also have flights that are not your fleet meaning if you're using an outside airplane, like a charter airplane or a NetJets airplane, it would show up in green by default instead of the color of your fleet airplane or airplanes. So on the main calendar, you'll notice that you can uh, go to different calendars here, but always notice that we have a go, go to today button at the top. So just hit go to today and it will always bring you back to today no matter where you're working. Also keep in mind that let's say that you're working on the calendar and now you are busy building something on the calendar, but you get a phone call and you'd like to jump to another part of the system, but you don't want to leave the page that you're on. If you'd like to jump over to a different part of the system, just come over to the menu and click the little white box with the arrow in it. We will keep you on the page you were on, open up a new tab to the new page, let you do what you're doing, close it, and you will be back to where you began. So on the main menu now, we will jump to schedule. Schedule is where you're going to maintain your people's schedule as far as, you know, vacations, work days, on call, all these different things. Once again, this is customizable in your settings. So if you'd like, go over to your settings, you can customize all of these categories. You can add more, remove them, change them, change the colors, whatever you'd like. In this case, we're just going to say that somebody is on vacation. And notice it selects vacation. Now we can keep clicking the boxes, as many as we want, until we're done with vacation. So we can select different people. And then if we want, we can close it and we can select something different. Just like that, right? Um, it is customizable, so understand that you can use start times and end times. You can also add notes to them. These items can show up on the main calendar as well if you allow them to do so on your main calendar settings. You can also add the aircraft at the top of this page so that you can see this um, with all airplanes as well as all staff members if you'd like. It is customizable. Um, you can also change the date range. Uh, 7 to 14 to 30 to 90. So on the schedule, you'll notice you still have the red lights, yellow lights, and green lights. Now we're going to go visit Documents. Documents is just a depository of documents that you can share with your company. So if you would like to send out a document to all of the pilots, it will let you select pilot user level and then mark it as read required and we will notify those pilots that they have a new document that they can read and if you only selected the user level pilot only pilots will be able to see the document once everybody has seen the document we will turn the color of the button to a, uh, to gray and let you know that everybody has seen it we will track everybody of when they read the document and you can archive the document you can also upload private documents in the area of departments and passengers, this is just going to be your departments of who uses the airplane. A typical corporate flight department might have the owner as a department, they might have the CEO as a department, they might have the engineering department, they might have partners who are different departments. 
I highly recommend that you use the departments and split up any entity that uses the airplane. For instance, if the owner of the company uses the airplane to go to their second home, that would normally be used for private flying. So I would highly recommend you put those private flights under the owner's name. But of course you would have a department for the company. So if it's a business trip, you would put the flight under the company name. Also keep in mind, if you have different partners, they may have multiple businesses, but it really helps at the end if you break up all the flying um, into different departments. That way, at the end of the year, when you print out a report or export a report, you can hand it to the accountant and the accountant has all the flights broken down and they know exactly who used the airplane and whether it was private or business. So I highly recommend you use these departments for anything you like. Um, it's, it's very uh, robust on what you can track, of course. You can have your own color. If you would like to have your own color, you can select your own color and this will override the aircraft color. So you can also have different colors per, per airplane. You can have different colors per department. You can also have private notes here for the department, pilot trip sheet notes, passenger trip sheet notes. So anything typed into the trip sheet notes will automatically preload onto a new trips trip sheets, and then you can edit them from that point. We have multiple contacts per department because you might have different departments with different contacts who can operate the request of the flight or operate that aircraft. We have a trip sheet header override. This will allow you to override your header with somebody else's logo and header information. Maybe you're managing a client's airplane and you would like to upload their logo and have their contact information for their flights. Um, you can also assign a limited scheduler or a salesperson to this department so that they can be very restricted and only use this department. And you can have private comments here for this department of anything that you'd just like to keep track of um, about this department. And it will just add a time and date stamp so that you can keep a history. Okay. Passengers are very similar, same thing, but we will show that area in a little while. The duty time, we're not gonna get into detail on the duty time. It's usually a charter feature, but we will have a separate video on it. Um, it does load the flight log trips automatically in here as flights and then it is the pilot's responsibility to add what kind of duty they did for the day. Office duty, training, whether it was flight duty when they went on duty or off duty. That is their business to add here. And then we keep a nice report up here uh, per pilot that breaks down all of their flying and summarizes everything, all of their quarterly days off. Now we're down in the accounting area. Once again, this would be a separate video, so we're not going to go into detail here on the accounting. Just keep in mind that our accounting is very big, it's very robust. It will track every penny in your flight department if you want it to. Most corporate flight departments tend to only track their flight expenses so that they can organize all of their different expenses like fuel, hotels, all that type of stuff and assign them to different departments or different partners. However, if you would like to track all of your expenses, you can do so in here just by adding new expense and you can track all of your um, hangar rent, your cleaning, your salaries, your insurance, whatever it is you want. And at the end of the year, we give you a nice report that will show you and break down everything that you had. So you'll notice here that uh, we have different reports and here it will actually categorize uh, all kinds of your um, your uh, uh, expenses here. So um, at the top, you'll see here we have export to QuickBooks, we have invoices, we have uh, reimbursements that you can review and approve reimbursements for um, pilots, such as maybe they paid cash. We also have uh, categories here. So we will categorize all of your expenses, color code them, and uh, break it down to what you did this month versus last month, this year versus last year. And if you go over to reports, you'll notice that we also have um, expense reports over here, re expense summary. So, you know, uh, this will give you a few different items in here to look at. 
and notice that it'll also always categorize your expenses in here. So anything that we do with your expenses will all automatically categorize things for you and total them up automatically. And of course you can see that the pilots upload a copy of the receipt with their phone camera. So it's very helpful when the pilots are using their app, just uh, it snaps a picture of the receipt and automatically uploads it to the item that they were adding to the system. So accounting is very big and uh, if you're interested, please watch our other video. Now we're going to move on to reports. Our system has been around for about 15 years. So as you can imagine, we've had plenty of input from our flight department customers and we have lots of reports. So um, you can go through here and usually find some kind of report that's going to appease you. Um, we have different reports for different functions. For instance, if you'd just like to know what the total time is on a certain airplane right now today, just click on the aircraft reports, go to aircraft totals. And we will show you all of the totals on the airplane today as they are right this second. If you'd like to use flight logs, for instance, just go over to aircraft reports and go to flight logs. And if you'd like, we can do an annual here and uh, select an airplane and we will load the different flight logs. You'll notice that on our flight logs, we are, we actually have a filter here. And if you want, you can show the department name, the expenses and the receipts. If you don't want the expenses, just turn them off and it hides them, right? So uh, you also have a quick edit if you need to edit this flight log for some reason. You have a PDF if you want to save one PDF of this flight log. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll notice that you can download this in CSV format, which is Excel, or you can download the whole search range in PDF if you'd want one document of, say, all of the flight logs. On aircraft reports, we also have maintenance summaries. We have aircraft tracking. We have all types of we have operating costs line service for instance if you are a flight department and you have a line service or an fbo that needs to know when you're leaving and when you're uh, returning to home base you can give them a line service report and it's a live working report that shows them when you're leaving and when you're returning to home base and it shows them the fuel notes the catering notes and the ground transportation notes so that that way you can um, communicate with them without having to do phone calls or emails we also have aircraft forecasts, which are going to forecast the airplane out to how many hours and landings and cycles are going to be on the airplane at any given date in the future based upon the calendar and the schedule. We have a few other reports, of course, that are important crew reports like flight uh, pilot times and currency, duty times and um, pilot logs. Passenger reports are obviously very important. We have plenty of passenger reports in here, so you'll notice that it gives you all the required information that you might need, including the passenger names who were on board the legs. You can filter by many different things within our system. Inside the system, you'll also find owner reports. We have a full owner briefing or executive briefing. This briefing allows you to customize the system um, so that you can generate your own very nice year-end report that compares one month to a, the other month or one year to the other year and the usage of the airplane it breaks down all of your expenses and it even includes charts and graphs so the reports usually have a great deal of information and like i said we've had plenty of years of experience so i think that you'll find that there's some kind of report in here that will work for you if you'd like to just look around a little bit we keep in mind that we also have tax reports. So we do have aviation tax consultants, which is a company that does um, taxes. We have flight tax systems in here. And we also have civil taxes, which is very similar to those. It's This is just in the format. If you'd like to work with one of these companies, all you have to do is push the button and our system automatically dumps the data into their format. We've gone over settings. But keep in mind, this is very important. Always return to your settings if you're wondering if there's something that you can change in the system about, about something that you like or dislike. Um, help and tools. This is where you're going to come and get help and you're going to get FAQs, air, airport search, flight time and distance calculator. So if you need to come and do anything, this is where you'll do it here. Um, referrals. This is where you'd refer out our system. So on the next area, what we're going to do is we're going to open up a trip and show you around a trip real quick. So here I'm gonna open up a flight that is already built. This is what a flight looks like in our system. 
You have a menu at the top. You have a trip number, title, status, which you can change, and department and aircraft. You also have flight tags at the top, which you can change. You have an index of where you're flying to. You have one, you have your legs of your flight. And in between your legs in gray, you have your time and duty predictability bar. This will show your layover time, your total duty, your total flight time up until departure of the next leg. We also have your flight time here and your gallons expected estimated burn, your nautical miles estimated to be covered. And we have your flight risk right here that you can analyze. This is through your third party integrations such as Baldwin, Polaris, and uh, Pre-Flight Mitigator. Over here we have your three dot menu. This is where you're gonna edit your flights. You can also chat here. So if you'd like to chat to your crew, you can chat back and forth to your crew. You can add legs, remove legs. You can do briefing and planning. You can do EAPAs and handling. You can do customs documents here. Keep in mind, if you need a fuel stop, all you have to do is click the little plus sign up here. And we will take all of your calculate, uh, contract fuel, calculate your route along a map, and you can look for a good fuel, suitable fuel stop. You can add it to your flight with a 30 minute quick turn or a one hour quick turn, whatever you customized in your settings. And it will automatically add this leg as a tech stop. We have crew notes. And we have passenger notes. So you'll notice that we have different categories for all of these notes. So you know we have general, ground transportation, hotels, catering, stuff like that, right? Um, also be aware that our notes can also have private notes per crew member or per passenger. So if you want a private note that you don't want anybody else on the flight to see, you can add a private note for that pilot or that passenger and only that pilot or passenger would see the notes. Nobody else on the flight would see those private notes on their trip sheets or itineraries. It's a very helpful area for privacy. Um, we have leg uh, tags here. So if you'd like, you can have as many leg tags as you want. Uh, of course, you all build these into your system and you just check those and then those tags will display on members' calendars and they will also display in certain um, uh, reports. So you'll notice here that I've already got a flight built and we've already selected our FBOs. And here is where the FBO selection would normally take place. If we did not have an FBO selected, this is what it would look like. You have your different FBOs. Now we maintain the airport database and FBO data, database right here in house. So uh, we have people working that just update this data as well as working with the FBOs themselves. They actually log into our system and they provide updates to their own data. Um, you can see we have the retail fuel price, we have airplane manager fuel price, and if we had a contract fuel file uploaded, it would actually have a contract fuel price right here. We even capture some of the fees of what, they, what kind of fees they have at their FBO. We have a notes box that you can type in whatever you want. You can also mark an FBO as company favorite or department favorite. You can message an FBO as well. So once you select an FBO, we hide the other FBOs. And now we let you select your contract fuel down at the bottom. So if you had AvFuel here and Evo and WorldFuel, you could look at all of your different options. You can select which one you want and we will actually communicate with the fuel company and order your fuel. We will print this information onto your pilot's trip sheet so that they can make a smart decision when they arrive at the FBO and make sure that they get the cheapest price. You can see here on the uh, flight itself, that we have the totals at the bottom for your time and duty as well as your flight time. <clears throat> we have a comments area down here at the bottom that you can type in anything you want and it just stays right here on the trip page. It does not go anywhere. We also have some other areas here that you might want to look at. You can duplicate a flight quickly and make a new flight out of a current flight. You can also upload documents if you just like to keep store them here. At the top of the page, you'll notice that we have a crew page. This is where you're gonna select your crew members. So you're just gonna type their name in here and select their names. If you'd like to see a list of your crew members, you can click this crew selection 
and you can select from your crew here and we will display some helpful information here about their rest periods and scheduling conflicts. That way you can make a smart decision. This is a trip sheet in our system. You'll notice that it's uh, customizable because this could be your logo, this would be your header up the top. And you can have different information displayed here. You can see here we've got a signature line on, on the trip sheet. This is an optional feature. We also have a weight and balance input pad here, which is an optional feature as well, which you can turn on or off. And you'll notice here one of the most important things is we have this little green menu button per leg. So this menu button allows the pilots to do certain things like expenses, flight logs, discrepancies, or chat. So keep in mind the chat system is very good. I highly recommend you try it with your crew and, and uh, see what you think of it. And you'll notice at the bottom of the trip sheet we have your current hours, your projected hours at the end of the trip, your last VOR check, and then we have your next due items any open discrepancies on the airplane, and the last five resolved discrepancies on the airplane. If the pilot was using a phone or an app, um, the, the system would also scale to them. And this is what it would look like on their phone. So you'll notice it's still very usable, easy to deal with, and it's got some helpful functions in it. If they'd like to call the FBO, they just hit the call button. If they'd like to navigate from the hotel or the restaurant back to the FBO, they just hit the map button. That same thing applies with passengers. So they, they can also do a few different things as well. Back on the crew page, you'll notice that when you send out the trip sheets, we, we send them both by text message and by email. Also keep in mind, pilots can download the native app from the App Store. They can get notifications right on their phone and pilots can also log in normally so that they can have multiple ways to get their trip sheets. Once you've sent it, we tell you when you have sent it. Once they have viewed it, we can tell you when they viewed it. On the PAX page, it's very similar. You just select the boxes of the leg that the passenger is going to be on. You can mark things as CIFL if somebody is a CIFL passenger. And you'll notice that we have a trip sheet and an itinerary. A trip sheet is the basic version like the pilot and the itinerary is a nice single leg version that has a map and has pictures and uh, it's definitely the favorite within our system because the, um, the passengers like the, the more basic layout here. So you'll notice that um, it's got the picture of your airplane, pictures of your pilots, a map of the route, and it can also have the live flight tracking here. So it, it'll tell them when the airplane is arriving to pick them up, um, stuff like that. So it also allows them to chat um, if they need to chat. Um, it's got a high level of security restriction on the passengers, but um, if they do send you a message, you will get it in dispatch and the crew will also see it. Once again, um, keep in mind this is a mobile friendly version, so it will scale down. Uh, for the passengers on their phone, right? So back over to the main flight, you'll notice that we have history down here, we have settings, so also keep in mind that we have different functions depending upon who uh, is using the system. And we have flight logs here on the trip, so you'll notice here we have the, uh, the flight log layout. Keep in mind this is customizable over in the aircraft profile. And you've got different buttons down here. If you'd like to sign the flight log as the pilot, you can just sign it here with your finger or your mouse or cursor. And the signature will show up at the bottom. <clears throat> we have uh, VOR checks, uploads here if you'd like to store any documents with the flight log. And we also have invoices if you'd like to generate any invoices at the bottom. The next area that we have are the expenses of the trip. Of course, most of the expenses are usually added via the pilot's phones when they're flying the trip, so that's the easiest way to add them. Um, also, like we said, we categorize them at the very bottom and total everything up for you automatically. <clears throat> and then we have the summary of the trip. This is a summary report that just basically um, explains what took place. So you've got the trip 
um, here with the trip number and you have the airplane, the department that used the airplane, you have the airports to and from, how many passengers were carried. You have the scheduled departure information versus the actual um, departure information. So this was scheduled versus actually what took place. And over here you have the flight time and the miles and the fuel burn and the operational costs. Keep in mind at the top here you can turn off certain functions if you would like to see less information or more. So down here you scroll down and uh, you also see the passenger names and crew, crew names that were on board for that leg. And you see your totals. So here you can see it was a total of 8.6 flight hours on the trip. Block time, distance, fuel burn, fixed cost, variable cost, fixed and variable cost, and per hour cost total of what it cost you on that trip. Um, you have your different expenses and how they're categorized, and you have your receipts at the bottom. This report can be emailed and shared directly to someone out of the system. So that is the flight. Now the one last thing that we're going to go over today is how to add a flight. In our system, we built our, the system with executive assistants and schedulers in mind. So it is not difficult to add a flight. So in this case, I'm going to select an aircraft. Keep in mind, I can select a non-fleet airplane. I can, I can make a NetJets airplane. I can use a charter airplane. Um, so you do not have to use your own airplane, but if you do have your own airplane, you'll select your own airplane. <clears throat> and then you're going to select a department. In this case, we're going to select Costco. Right, And then we're going to select a date. Let's say that it's for tomorrow at 9 a.m. If it's TBA, you can select TBA. Then we're going to assign a trip number. We're sensing that the airplane is most likely to be departing out of Chicago Midway. And we're going to say that we are going to Orlando, Florida. So in this case, we can just type in Orlando, Florida. And our system will show you the six closest air airports that meet your airplane's criteria and if you want you can even show the drive time and drive distance from city center of Orlando Florida so you can see which airport is the closest right now if you want you could also change this you can actually copy and paste an address in here so you can even type in Disney World or Orlando Florida and our system will find Disney World okay so select the airport that you would like <clears throat> And now we have made leg one of your flight. So in order to add leg two, just click the green plus sign, hit return to Midway, or copy and paste an address or type in a city and state and we will help you find another airport. So if you'd like, you could say that you're going to go to, um, oh, let's just say Dallas, Texas, right? So just type in Dallas, Texas, and we will use city center of Dallas, Texas, and you could uh, pick the airport that's the closest with also the cheapest fuel pricing here and make an educated decision. Notice that you can also see whether they have U.S. Customs and what the phone number is to U.S. Customs in case you'd like to call. <clears throat> um, so just add the leg, edit the flight time, uh, the departure time, and say that you're going to leave at uh, 7 p.m. And there you go, you've got your basic itinerary. So now you're gonna go through the steps of making your trip title, adding your statuses, and selecting your notes, and your crew, and your passengers, and you're gonna build your flight. Keep in mind that we do have a flight release system. If you would like to use the flight release system, you'll have to go to settings and turn it on. What that will do is it'll make it so that only administrators and schedulers can see the pending flights and nobody else can see them. Once you release the flight, then all of the other users, view only, pilots, flight attendants, mechanics, such like that, then they can see the flights, okay? Um, so it is a nice feature, highly recommend it, and um, it's useful in many ways. So that is the uh, basic overview of Airplane Manager. Uh, keep in mind, we have several other videos. Highly recommend you take a look at a few of them. And also, I uh, do want to point out that we're always making changes to the system. So be aware that we're making changes to the system weekly, and we're always upgrading and adding new features to the system. We send out newsletters about every two weeks about those updates.
If you have any questions, reach out to our support staff. We'll be happy to help you. Thank you very much.